Mr. Chairman, we now have a quorum. Very good. Thank you. If we're ready, we're recording? Yes. All right. With that, I will call the meeting to order. Uh, first off, let's do a uh, roll call if we can. David, if you were to see us, if you would leave that. Sorry, uh, Alderman Boyd, present. Alderman Cohn, not present. Uh, Commissioner Mann? Virtually present. <laughs> Commissioner Boaz? Present. Commissioner Bradley? Present. Commissioner Conway? Present. Commissioner Peoples, not present. Uh, Commissioner Goodman? Present. Commissioner Vines? Present. Commissioner Young, not present. And Chair Strouder? Present. And Chair Reform? Very and, good. Uh, Just clear. Mr. Chairman, uh, there may be a last minute substitute from the comptroller. Uh, are they on? Yes, Ryan is on on behalf of. Uh, of yeah, Ryan Coleman. Can they go? There are two uh, Question for you, David. I did not hear. Did you say Alderman Boyd was or was not present? He did not appear to be present. Fine. Not present. Okay, thank you. Uh, I get to look at David. We have a quorum that do a couple of wood. Sure. Get good. Alderman Boyd also has a, a duplicate thing, so thankfully we can proceed with it. Go ahead. Okay, so we do have a quorum. All right, with that, the first order of business. As we know, this is somewhat unique for all of us to be on a video conference call. Uh, right now, they are controlling the meeting at the office down at 1520. Uh, the only ones that are not needed, muted are the commissioners at this time. Uh, when appropriate, they will call out any questions by listening for the commissioners first. Uh, on your screen on the lower left, on the lower part of the screen, there is an area that says chat. If you want to click on that, it will open up a chat screen. You can then submit any questions for the commission at that point, and we will then deal with those as they go along so that you can still be recognized when the time is appropriate. Uh, there is a change to the agenda uh, before we start the approval of minutes. Uh, item number six and number seven will be switched, so we will take up 32.20 first, then 3120 second as the agenda is printed. Uh, with that, the next order of business is the approval of minutes from the March 4th, 2020 meeting for the commissioners. Uh, so with the approval of minutes, uh, David, if we could have a, a, if somebody would make a motion from the commission and state your name when you do make that motion, please. This is Commissioner Banton, move to approve. Second. And who seconded? Uh, Randy Vine. So we have a we have a, a motion and a second. David, if you would call vote. Uh, Commissioner Banton. Aye. Commissioner Boaz. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Who is this one? You. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Commissioner Goodman? Aye. Commissioner Brian? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Uh, uh, Alderman Boyd is here. Aye. Okay. We have, so we have the approval of minutes. Uh, so at this point, I think Don is going to introduce our presenter for the item of PDA 001-02-NBD. Uh, and then we will have, at that point, a presentation between o from Uncle Jones. And then from Cecilia, then we'll go into a, we'll ask for a motion to open the public hearing. So at this point, it's simply presentation. 
Hopefully everyone has their presentation or can see the screen at this point. And that presentation will be given by Cecilia. Okay. Opal Dufford. Oh, oh, Opal's giving an overview. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. Great. Good evening, oh, well, good evening everyone. Uh, first, thank you for this opportunity to present our project. Doorways is an interface organization that's been providing housing, health, and hope to people living with HIV for 32 years. We we're very excited about the opportunity to build a new campus on the North Jefferson Corridor and move our existing campus into North Jefferson. Um, our project is a result of uh, several years of planning through our board and work with RISE, uh, who is on the call with us today. And so they, along with Trivers, are able to answer questions for you. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> I'm just going through the slides now. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a three-acre uh, three area that we um, have highlighted here. And it is a block away, if you want to go to the next uh, slide, to our existing campus for um, families called Monokaya, where we have about 100 people living on that site. So at the new campus, what we're going to do is be able to address the needs of homeless people affected by HIV, um, particularly the 50 new units of housing that we secure to the low-income housing tax credit program through the fall, but also expanding our services in behavioral health around mental health, substance abuse, employment, and life skills training, all integrated on one campus. In addition to our new headquarters, we have space for two retail bays, and that is designed to address the stigma that people living with HIV often face, so that we'll have people on the campus for various reasons, um, those seeking services through doorways and those getting community services to the retail, whether it be a bank or whatever we're going to have at those two days. Um, we hope that our project will serve as a national model because what we're aiming to do is address HIV and the end of the epidemic through a housing lens versus a biomedical approach. We've received a lot of support thus far from the city of St. Louis and several funders. Also, we had about a $25 million project in the first phase is about uh, $17 million or so. And through um, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, through other public funding, and through a private capital campaign, we've already raised more than $14 million of the $17 million for the first phase. If you'll advance the slide, please. Um, there you see um, the new campus in proximity that's in the foreground and in the background is the existing family facility that we have. And if you'll advance to the last slide, please. And this is now the rendering of what the campus will um, look like through the work of Trivers Architects. To the left, you'll see our 50 housing units. And then as you move to the right, you'll uh, enter the doorway administration and program space all the way to the end of the property, which is on the right or um, the north end of the site. In the back is phase two, which we haven't talked about yet. Another um, uh, that would be permanent supportive housing in uh, the second phase. So right now we're focused on the first phase, which is the next of the I'm going to ask you to stop if you don't mind. Um, I uh, can open it up to uh, questions, but essentially that is uh, our development and what our new campus will look like. Um, and I'm happy to entertain questions about uh, anything specific related to the design. Thank you. Oh, well, look, we're going to hold questions. Well, let's see and do the presentation first, uh, just because I'm one we're in a conference, and obviously it can get really a little radical. So, Cecilia, if you would go ahead and follow with your presentation, and then we'll come back for questions after after the following that. Okay. Thank you. 
And I think All right. So given the development project that Opal just presented, the current neighborhood plan does not allow for a mixed-use development uh, and the rezoning that's also being proposed. Uh, the request before you this evening is to amend four maps, two proposed land use maps and two proposed zoning maps within the existing neighborhood plan. Sorry, give me a The primary people we need to have are the health care providers. Can you have, before you go on, if you are not speaking, can you place your phone on mute? We're picking up other conversations and backgrounds, yeah. either telephone, television, or other individuals. So I'd appreciate it at this point if you could mute your phone. Generally, if it takes it away from the people who really need it. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star six. You are unmuted. All right, so uh, this is the proposed land use map that you can see here, and it's for the entire area. Uh, the box in the bottom corner is showing the proposed change. So the designation would be changing from retail trade multiple variants to mixed use. And those are the designations that are provided by the existing map. If you go to the next one. Uh, this is a proposed land use map, which is designated for the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood focus area within the planning area, and the change is the same uh, from retail trade multiple barriers to mixed use. The next slide. The proposed zoning map changes for the plan are proposed uh, to change from F, neighborhood commercial, to G, local commercial. Again, reflecting the, consol the consolidation of parcels uh, to remove the right-of-way within the two-block area. And the proposed zoning map, uh, if you go to the next one, showing the same change. Here's the next slide. The strategic land use plan designates this area as neighborhood commercial. And does the designation encourages development of commercial uses that serve adjacent neighborhoods. And it allows for commercial uses that serve multiple neighborhoods. Additionally, the NCA designation states that these areas may include higher density mixed use residential and commercial uses. Given that the project proposed here would allow for a higher density mixed use building with office, retail, and residential uses, the doorways organization will also be taking uh, that office space and intends to serve those existing residents and other residents in the region um, from the Mount Kaya development uh, and others in both the city and the region that are affected by HIV AIDS. Therefore, staff finds the request in conformity with the strategic land use plan. To go to the next slide. I'd also like to note that this request comes from, uh, comes after a significant amount of engagement uh, with the neighborhood and existing uh, organizations. Over several months, the Doorways Organization has engaged with various individuals representing neighborhood groups, both via Project Connect and on their own. Uh, a letter that's attached to your resolution as Exhibit C details this effort, which took place between July of 2019 and now, March of 2020. The letter details the engagement with the organization, and the list on the slide are those organizations that they've engaged with. Go to the next slide. Overall, staff finds the amendment to be consistent with the overall vision of the neighborhood plan and finds the inconformity with the strategic land use plan and recommends approval of amendment three. Um, I know we want to move into the public hearing next, so I am that's the end of my presentation. Okay. With that, um, the next order of business would first come with the public hearing. And following the public hearing, then we would open it up for commissioners' full conversation and questions. So I would entertain a motion to open the public hearing from a commissioner, please. Please state your name before you make the motion and your name before you say it. And you have to unmute yourself. Okay. This is uh, Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. I move to open for public hearing. This is Jake Ben. I second that motion. Okay. At this time, we have a we will have a public hearing. Uh, I will actually ask for Cecilia to manage this because there have been those that have registered for a public hearing, 
uh, I will allow her to direct those call, you know, those persons in order. Uh, we just typically ask that you maintain your your time limit to two minutes or so for your comment for your comments. So to see, I'll let you manage this portion, please. Mr. Chairman, I think there's one more procedural thing that David would like to say. I, I think we can either do a roll call or somebody can move for previous roll. Oh, thank you. Previous roll, Commissioner Bradley. Hearing, hearing no objection to previous roll. Uh, the public hearing is open. Okay. Uh, at this time, we uh, our building at the moment is not uh, open to the public, so we do not have anyone from the public who would want to speak in person here. However, uh, if anyone is on the Zoom call and would like to uh, present themselves in the chat, please put your name uh, there and we can read it from there. Or alternatively, please unmute yourself and speak up so that we can hear your petition. I, I believe we, we were waiting for one individual. Jay Watson, if you're on the call, now is the time. I am not. He might be muted. Oh, Jay, you, you need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you at the moment. Oh, we just unmuted you if you uh, accept to unmute. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Okay, how you doing? Uh, sorry about that uh, technical difficulty. Well, yeah, this is uh, Jay Watson from the St. Louis Development Corporation, a Project Connect manager. And um, we are tremendously supportive of this project over the last, uh, I would say, uh, I guess it's a little bit over uh, half a year, we've been engaged coordinated with the Doorways team on a number of efforts to support this project, um, not only on the community engagement end with through Project Connect, but also on the uh, public infrastructure end um, regarding a uh, number of priority projects the, projects the agency has lined up on, on Jefferson Avenue. So through those uh, through those those jobs, through those uh, those conversations, we've been able to coordinate our project accordingly to support Doorways and also make sure that our projects regarding improving the infrastructure in the area are moving uh, as planned. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Karapsa. Um, so if anyone else would like to speak up, now's the time. Otherwise, uh, I believe we've had all the comments that we're aware of. I'm not seeing any on the message board on the chat. And I'm not seeing anybody unmute themselves at this time. So with that, with no objections, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, Randy Bynes. Second, Bradley. I've got a motion and a second. Call for vote. Previous roll. Have a previous roll, hearing no objections. At this point, we will close the public hearing. Uh, now, at this point, what we will allow the commissioners to do is ask questions. I will call on them as we as we typically go through the vote roll, uh, and then the two people will ask either Opal or Cecilia to answer any questions that are brought forward. And I know, Opal, you said that I think Mark from Rise is on the line with you that if he may need to ask any of, answer any of those also. So at this point, the first question, uh, Alderman Boyd, do you have any questions at this point? I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, Alderman Benson, you would be next. I wish. That's Alderman. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a this is a great looking dynamic project. I'm excited to see it get off the ground. A couple of questions. Um, one. You mentioned that this was going to be done in phases. What's considered phase one and what's phase two or later? Great. Um, yes, yeah, so phase one, um, if we go back to the rendering, is the, um, what you see that fronts Jefferson. Um, everything that you see that fronts Jefferson. So, oh, yes, yeah, there we go. So on the left of your screen is 50 housing units, which we've already received LIHTC funding for. 
Um, and then what is actually on the front of Jefferson there, actually above Jefferson, is the programmatic and administrative headquarters for doorways along the two retail bays that we had. That's all phase one, which is about 17 million, give or take. And then phase two is what's in the uh, background there, which is another 36 unit apartment building. Great. And uh, it looks like there was an extensive list of uh, community events that you guys did. What was some of the feedback you got from, from that process, and did any of that feedback incorporate itself into this, this final vision? Yeah, great question. Um, it, most of the feedback was um, actually was all positive to the state. No one um, come forward with, with anything negative. Um, but um, it was excitement for the project. It was ways in which we could um, blend our programming in to support the existing neighborhood, um, in which we have a community room built in there so that other nonprofits and organizations can take advantage of it. Um, the schools, we talked about um, ways in which that we could enroll our homeless children in the schools more quickly and form strategic partnerships there. It was about programming, maybe holding certain neighborhood groups. Um, and it was also um, from, I guess, from the elected officials and some other uh, key neighborhood folks that wanted to make sure that the schools were on board since we were moving across the street from six schools. We visited each of those schools, and they all were supportive, and most provided letters of support for, the, for, for different funding at different stages. So uh, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Everyone understands the needs of this housing and um, has been supported. Great. And uh, last question um, from the rendering here. It looks like there's quite a few um, environmental aspects like solar panels, green mm -hmm. roofs. Are you guys pursuing any environmental accreditations for the building, or is that just eye candy? Well, it's <laughs> an enterprise green um, certification, I guess, or standard, if you will. Um, so, and I'll let RISE address this, but some of those certifications are very costly, and so while we may build up to the standard, we may not actually seek, you know, the certification because we are a nonprofit on a limited budget. That said, we're still accepting donations. The capital campaign is going on. <laughs> so uh, look for us at doorwayshousing.org if you're interested. Um, but um, so um, the green roof, you know, we're um, hopeful for that. The solar panels, we're hopeful for that. But uh, that really has to do with our fundraising and how we're able to pull that off. So we're hopeful for all of it. Great. Well, excited. No further questions. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Banton. Uh, Commissioner Bush, you would be next, then followed by Commissioner Bradley, Commissioner Bant, uh, Commissioner Boyes. There no questions. Yeah, okay, Commissioner Bradley, any questions at this point? No question, just uh, echo the sentiments of everybody else. This is a great project. It's great to see development in that particular area where not a lot has happened in the recent past. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Conway, you have any questions? Will you entertain those now? No questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Goodman, any questions from you at this point? No, no questions. Okay. Commissioner Vines, any questions from you? Uh, just two really quick ones. Number one, um, I may have missed it, but uh, what was on the site before um, before this this proposal? Sure, um, it was formerly a nightclub, which has been entertaining for us as a nonprofit interface organization to now own a nightclub. <laughs> uh, if you remember the school's nightclub from back in the day. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, club lavish, but it's been defunct for a few years now. Okay. It's okay. And then there's a house that's falling down, literally falling down on one corner of the property. So just two two structures that would be de demolished to make way for this. Correct. Okay. And then my other my last question: Are you will doorways retain any um, functions in the existing building in the central west end, or is that going to be on a sale block? 
Yeah, so we um, know it's not to sell, although I get offers for it all the time. Nice job, uh, We run our 24-hour residential care facility for the city of living with eight state of Missouri out of that building, and so that program will stay there. But all of our admin and other programs will move to the new building. Okay, great. Well, thank you. It's an outstanding project. Uh, thank you, you Very thank you. excited about it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Baez. Uh, with that, let me say first, Oprah, I applaud you and the work that you're doing. Uh, congratulations. We look forward to that. I have no questions, but I will let from the commissioners know I support the project. However, I will not be voting on this uh, project. I'll be abstaining simply because of a, an appearance of conflict. Uh, I don't want it to be that way. Uh, at this point, we've had all questions from commissioners. Uh, Cecilia, would you like to make refreshes on what the call to action is for this? You move to the, the slide again. So we've ended the public comment. The action item is uh, to approve the resolution for PDA 00102 MDD for Amendment 3 for the plan of the Neighborhood Specific Board. Okay. With that, we will uh, entertain a motion for the approval of that item. Conley moves for approval. Second. Randy Vine. Okay. With that, uh, would you please call a roll, a roll call vote, please? Alderman Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Mann. Aye. Commissioner Platt. Aye. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Conway. Aye. Commissioner Goodman. Aye. Commissioner Bryan. Aye. Commissioner Crowder. Abstain. And the motion passes with all but one voting aye. Great. Very good. That, that moves us to the first part of this. Uh, the second item that will continue on this element is number 17-20 RDM. Uh, Cecilia, are you making that presentation also? Yes, sir. She is going to make the presentation okay. of the commission uh, with a slightly new procedure. Uh, each of the following action items only have three slides. Uh, so we're going to assume that you've looked at your full uh, program uh, of what we send you in the mail. Uh, Cecilia will do the highlights. Obviously, you can ask any questions and we'll move along efficiently. So the next, the next item on your agenda is for the lighting study and redevelopment plan for Jefferson Gamble, Elliott Mills. Do the next slide for me. The request before you follows the plan amendment that we just discussed. The request for this item is to approve the lighting study and redevelopment uh, on the two block site and would facilitate the redevelopment of these parcels to accommodate a mixed use building, four doorways with office space, program space, retail, and multifamily residential units. The next slide. This is the rendering you've already seen of the proposed mixed-use development. Let me go to the next slide. Staff has reviewed the request and recommends the area be declared blighted. Additionally, staff finds the request in conformity with the strategic land use plan as well as the now amended neighborhood plan for the fifth ward uh, and recommends approval. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. With this, instead of going through the entire list, I will ask, is there a commissioner that has any questions on this study. Hearing no questions, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the uh, writing study of 17-20 RDM. I move for approval. It's Alderman Boyd. Thank you. Second, Jake Benton. It's been moved and seconded. Previous roll. Previous roll. Hearing no objections to previous roll, uh, 1720 RDM is approved at this point. Okay. Uh, the next item on your agenda, we're going to, we're going to change slightly. We're going to move 32-20 REZ up first because it is still dealing with the same area uh, of concern. And at this point, Cecilia, if you would walk us through that one. Sure, absolutely. Go to the next slide. Uh, keep going. Yeah. 
Perfect. So this item on your agenda, uh, again, does deal with the same development we've been speaking about. It includes 15 parcels totaling 2.86 acres in the Jack Andrew neighborhood. Next slide. The request is to rezone these parcels between Gamble, Jefferson, Elliott, and the Alley in City Block 968 from a mixture of F and dual zone CG to local commercial districts. The zoning administrator, if you go to the next slide, finds the request would achieve four objectives. It would provide additional housing and support services to a vulnerable population. It would allow for improvement of existing vacant land, and it would bring the zoning to conformance with its intended and future use, as well as eliminating improper dual zoning uh, designations. Therefore, staff finds the proposed request in conformity with the strategic land use plan and the now amended neighborhood plan and uh, recommends approval. Again, I will ask if a commissioner has any questions, please at this time, raise them. I'm hearing no questions from commissioners at this time, so we'll entertain a motion for the approval of 32-20 REZ as it has been sent to us in information. Move to approve, check in. Second, Vine. It's been moved and seconded by uh, Commissioner uh, Manson and Commissioner Vines. Call for vote. Well, that is the previous uh, uh, I hear a call for previous. I hear a call for previous role. Any objections to previous role? Hearing no objections to previous role, 32-20 REZ is, is also approved. Again, also congratulations on this step of the process. We're all looking forward to the help that you give those in the community. And you can go back to what's the website again? Doorwayshousing.org. Very good. There's your commercial. <laughs> That's a public service announcement there. Uh, with that, uh, the next item is listed on your agenda number six, which is 614 Lake Avenue. Number 31-20 REZ, I think, Cecilia, you will also be presenting that, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, there you go. So this item, as you mentioned, is for 614 Lake Avenue. Go to the next slide. The applicant is in the process of subdividing the existing parcel known as 5165 Washington and is requesting to rezone the northern portion of the, uh, the uh, site from B2 family to H area commercial district. A couple of things to note with the circumstances on this request is that the southern portion of the parcel would, would remain B and would allow for the redevelopment of that site for a single family home or a two family home, um, consistent with the rest of the area in the neighborhood. Additionally, the subject site is cut off from the residential neighborhood by gate um, and are pointed out in the slide here and therefore lives as kind of a transitional use Given that the request would allow for the renovation of an existing building, which is formerly a church and likely before that was a residential structure, um, into an office use, and that the adjacent commercial development to the north is also zoned H area commercial, staff finds this request to be appropriate. You'll see the renderings on the slide here, and uh, as well as in the exhibit of the resolution. You go to the next slide. The zoning administrator finds that the request would achieve three objectives, including create additional commercial services and growth, encourage additional opportunities for residential development on land that's currently vacant, and bring the zoning of the parcel into conformance with its, with its intended and future use. Um, while the subject site is designated as a neighborhood preservation area, given that the site is kind of in an odd transitional situation that I mentioned moments ago, Staff finds that the request is in conformity with the adjacent neighborhood commercial area strategic land use designation to the north and recommends approval of the request. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. With that, uh, prior to the questions, I'll simply make a note. Uh, there is a letter of support in your packet from Alderwoman Navarro for this rezoning. Uh, we'll go through the calls. Commissioner Boyd, any questions? Commissioner, Commissioner Benton, any questions? Yes, so uh, you stated that this before was a church, was a, a residential structure. Do we know, was it a home or was it a garage or what? It's really hard to tell. You know that info? Record. 
back to the rendering one slide. Um, the original structure is the gray one that you see on the top image. And then the, the renovation that they're proposing is that addition on the front. And it looks like from the satellite image that there's a, a small little structure behind that's labeled to be demolished. Is that, what is that little bit? That was a garage that has essentially already been demolished. Uh, it was collapsing before they even came in to see us. Got it. So is, does the, this property extend into that other lot there? I'm a little... It, it did. It, the the resub division uh, would propose it to be as shown on the screen now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, no further questions. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Boyens, any questions? No questions. Commissioner Bradley? No questions. Commissioner Conway? No questions. Commissioner Goodman? No questions. Commissioner Bynes? No questions. Very good. With that, I will entertain a motion for the approval of 3120REZ by a commissioner. So moved, Commissioner Bradley. Second that a motion. It's been moved and approved uh, both by Commissioner Bradley and then Commissioner Vines. Call for both, please. Alderman Boyd. Um, Alderman Boyd is multitasking uh, tasking at the moment, so let's... Uh, Proceed with that. Uh, Commissioner Vanden? Aye. Commissioner Boet? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Conway? Aye. Commissioner Goodman? Aye. Commissioner Vine? Aye. Commissioner Rodner? Aye. Chair Strother? Aye. Motion passes with seven votes in favor. Very good. We are moving along. Uh, the next item on, on the agenda would be 3320REZ, uh, Folsom Avenue in Botanical Heights, and we'll allow Cecilia to continue. Uh, that's actually. Oh, Robin, you're there. I am here. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Terrific. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, uh, as you mentioned, this is a proposed rezoning of two parcels, 4172 and 4178 Folsom Avenue to the B multiple family dwelling district. 4172 Folsom currently has two zoning districts, a dual zone, uh, zone both B and F, while 4178 Folsom uh, is zoned F neighborhood commercial district. The, uh, the site, which you see outlined there in yellow, is about two tenths of an acre. It's located at the southeast corner of, of Folsom Avenue and Clem Street in the Botanical Heights neighborhood, uh, which uh, was formerly known as McCree Town. The, uh, the site is also located uh, within the boundaries of the North I-44 Local Historic District. As you can see from the aerial photograph, the existing uses are two vacant lots and the petitioner would like to consolidate those two parcels with the adjacent parcel, 4170 Folsom, in order to construct four single-family buildings. The uh, petitioner is UIC, uh, which uh, many of you know has constructed many homes in this neighborhood. UIC is uh, representing the Tanical Heights Homes LLC, which owns those two parcels as well as the adjacent parcel. Can I? Oh, thank you for advancing the slide. Um, the map on your screen there is an existing zoning map for the area, and it shows that 4178 Folsom, which is the corner parcel there at the Folsom and Clem, is zoned F, uh, shown in pink, while the adjacent parcel is zoned both F and B. Um, and as you know, the, since the consolidation of parcels with different zoning districts, is not permitted. The uh, petitioner has requested the rezoning to the D multiple family dwelling district. Next slide, please. So in terms of comments, the proposed rezoning of the subject parcels would achieve three objectives according to the zoning administrator, including the fact that the proposed use would bring new housing opportunities to the immediate area and bring the subject property into conformity for its intended future use. 
The uh, proposed rezoning is, is in conformity with the city's strategic land use plan, which designates it as a neighborhood preservation area, uh, which encourages infill residential development. It's also in conformity with the McCree Town South neighborhood plan, uh, which was adopted as a neighborhood plan by the Planning Commission roughly 15 years or so ago. That neighborhood plan recommends residential uses for the rezoning site. So it is in conformity with those two documents. Staff recommends approval of the proposed rezoning, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Roman. With that, uh, we'll entertain questions from Alderman, Commissioner Alderman Boyd. Hearing none, Commissioner Banton. Um, yes, so do you, is the plan to, there's there's a existing structure on one of these sites already, correct? Is the plan to rehab that or demolish it and build a new new home? No, uh, both both of the parcels that are being rezoned are currently vacant lots. Oh, okay, very good. Um, then no no questions. Thank you, Commissioner Boyes. No questions. Commissioner Bradley. No questions. Commissioner Conway. No questions. Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Commissioner Vines? No questions. With that, I will make a note that there's a letter of support from the Alderman Rody for this for this rezoning in the packet which you have received, and I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the staff. So moved, Vines. Second, Panton. I have a motion to approve from Commissioner Bynes, second from Banton. Call for vote. Take a senior person and then a... Previous role, Alderman Boyd. Senior person. I hear a call for previous role. Any objections? Alderman Boyd, on the last role, you did not vote. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to do... I'm sorry, I'm trying to do two meetings at one time, but okay. I'll be a high on this role. All right, with that then, Commissioner Boyd, aye. Commissioner Banson? Aye. Commissioner Boyd? Aye. Commissioner Bradley? Aye. Commissioner Conway? Aye. Commissioner Goodman? Aye. Commissioner Vines? Aye. And I and Chairman Earl says aye. Sorry, David, took over your space for a moment. And as we move on, we'll make note that Roland did join us, but he joined us uh, virtually uh, from his home in Grand Lac, uh with a PDA-owned laptop uh, that's also been configured in such a way that he can access his files and a number of the drives, his files on his desk computer at the office, and a number of files in our system that work remotely. Very good. Your office coming into the 21st, 22nd century. Uh, with that, item number 34-20, and I don't know who's presenting. Me, me. Okay. Very good. All right, this last action item on your agenda is for 5637 purging. The request is to rezone the single uh, parcel from E Multiple Family Dwelling District to H Area Commercial District in order to consolidate the subject site with the parcel to the west. The petitioner is also in the process of vacating the alley between the two parcels and will relocate and rededicate the alley on the eastern edge of the subject site. In other words, the petitioner will not be removing the alley, but rather relocating it. Go to the next slide. Uh, this is the zoning map. So you'll see that it will be matching the zoning designation with the parcel on the western side so that it can be uh, appropriately consolidated and zoned uh, appropriately. Go to the next slide. The zoning administrator finds the request would achieve two objectives, including create new housing opportunities on land that is vacant or underutilized, and it would bring zoning into conformity with uh, its intended future use. The subject site is designated as neighborhood preservation area, and given that the site would essentially allow for the extension of mixed use frontage along the Oliver, staff finds that the request is in conformity with a uh, specialty mixed use area strategic land use designation uh, to the west and therefore recommend approval of the request. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Very good. Uh, prior to questions, I'll let you know if you have not, there is a letter of support in the packet we received from Alderwoman uh, Hubbard on this in the 26th Ward. 
Uh, we'll begin with questions first from Commissioner Boyd, if there are any questions. Hearing none, I know you're doing two meetings at one time. Commissioner Banton, any questions at this time? Uh, no questions. Okay, Commissioner Boyd, ask any questions? No questions. Commissioner Bradley? No questions. Commissioner Conway? Commissioner Goodman. No questions. Commissioner Vines. No questions. Uh, back to Commissioner Boyd or Commissioner, uh, I think it was Conway that did not respond. Mary, no none at this point. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Boyd. Commissioner, no at this point, I'll entertain a motion from the a motion from the committee. You'll, you'll see the map. Move for approval, Alderman Boyd. Second, Conway. Previous, previous roll. Call for previous roll. Any objections? Hearing no objections to previous roll. Item 3420 is approved at this point. Uh, that completes our action items at this point. And I'll defer to Don for any delegated items or comments at this point if he has any. I do not, but I will tell you that Scott Ogilvie, who's joined our staff, uh, also is helping make sure that when we do the street vacations, we're doing them prudently with proper input and principles and so on. So uh, that's good. Uh, I can say uh, that we have posted that we will see you virtually or in person at the May meeting on uh, May 6th. So uh, with that, as our mayor says at every meeting, practice your health, maintain your health, be kind to your friends and family, neighborhood, and please participate in social distancing. Thanks. Don, let me take uh, a moment on behalf of the commission to applaud you and your staff. Uh, this went off without a hitch, believe it or not, uh, with right now 25 people online, and I think we were up to 31 at one point or another. So Cecilia and, and, and the rest of the team there, thank you so much for doing this, Roman and all. You all have done a great job. Uh, again, to uh, Doorways, congratulations on your project. We wish you the best. Please take care of yourself and your family. Uh, I pray all is safe. And at this point, I will entertain a motion to close the meeting. So moved. It's been moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Everybody be safe.